Hey everybody, it's Dave Hall here with the Gogi Fitness Systems. I'm bringing you another episode of War Stories, Tales from the Front. Today I have the esteemed honor of bringing you uh, my friend and mentor, Elliot Hulse. Uh, I know that you've heard Elliot's name probably in just about every interview I've done so far. Uh, he's a huge influence in most of the people that uh, uh, that I work and talk with, and uh, his work is all the way across the board from uh, from marketing, uh, from fitness, uh, building strength. His code is learning how to become the strongest version of yourself, and he takes a very holistic and open approach to what that means. Um, without too much more introduction, Elliot, say hey to everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Dave, thanks for having me on the call, buddy. Uh, absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with us. Um, for everybody who doesn't know, um, give us a little bit of your background. Tell us you know, where you came from. Well, my background with regard to fitness starts way back when I was probably about four years old. My uncle came and lived with my parents on Long Island, so it was, it was really my mom's little brother. He was what you would call a superman, especially to a four-year-old, because he, uh, he did backflips, he would chop bricks with his hands, he would do all types of wild and crazy physical feats that he learned as a black belt in northern Shaolin, Kung Fu. He was a martial artist. And uh, he was also a gymnast. He was also a bodybuilder. And he was also a marathon runner. So you can, Im- you can imagine uh, my psyche was developed in, in an environment where I literally lived with a Superman. And he taught me and my little brothers how to, how to work out, and how to do push-ups, sit-ups, climb ropes, and uh, lift barbells all the way through high school. Had a profound impact on me. So uh, that's the canvas through which I was able to paint or begin painting the story of my professional life. Uh, I went on to play football in college through college scholarship, uh, athletic scholarship, and I also studied exercise physiology in college. And I went on to begin teaching my friends and teammates the things that I knew and that I learned from my uncle. Uh, about barbell training, body weight training, gymnastics, uh, sprinting, strength and conditioning. And to this very day, that's what I, I spend my life doing, teaching people the things I learned way back when I was four years old. Wow, that's cool. Um, I know from my own martial arts experience that uh, uh, when whenever martial artists get together and talk about how they got started, it, it, invariably it's some variation of Bruce Lee or David Carradine in, in the old Kung Fu series, and you actually had uh, that that heroic character actually living in your house. That must have been a, a tremendous inspiration. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, I should also mention before we get too far into this interview that uh, Elliot is one of the mental meatheads that's going to be presenting here at my gym in January along with uh, Chip Conrad, Jason C. Brown, and Matt Wichlinski. Uh And so we're very excited to, uh, uh, to have him as a part of that. Um, from my experience and my knowledge of your background, Elliot, you've uh, you've crossed a wide, wide spectrum of of influences in in fitness, uh, all the way from you know your experiences as a professional strongman to Paul Check. Um, can you speak to that a little bit about that wide canvas that you that you've learned from? Well. It- from what I understand and what I've heard, you've got two general types of people. You've got, big, you got people who are big picture people who aren't necessarily uh, capable or, or talented in picking little details apart. And, and they're not usually number people, but they're people that can see how big pieces fit together. They, they seem to have like that, uh, that view from the helicopter where most things are concerned. And then you've got other people who are tinkerers, people who are really good at numbers and statistics. They're great technicians. They're, they're incredible with their hands and, and dealing with small patient items. 
I happen to be the former. I happen to, I happen to look at everything and see everything at the same time. And uh, it's a blessing and it's a curse because I move very quickly and I don't necessarily uh, build the depth of mastery in any one particular thing, but I see how they all fit together. And I've always been fascinated with that, especially in regards to fitness, to health, to the body. You know, I, I don't see how health of the mind can be separated from health of the body. In fact, I, I see how they're one thing. I mean, the brain extends itself into your body via the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system. There really is no true separation except from, for what we have decided to call a separation between the mind and the body. Um, and then our environment. That, you know, we are not separate from our environment. So to consider the food that we eat, to consider the the air that we breathe, to consider the ground that we walk on as something different from our body and from our brain is silly. It, it doesn't exist. You, in the same way that a bumblebee, a honeybee, doesn't exist without a flower to, you know, for it to, to, to produce its honey and to share its... Uh, pollen and whatnot, They're like one doesn't exist with the other, and that flower doesn't exist with the sun, without the sun, and the sun doesn't exist without the universe. We don't exist without the ground that we walk on, the air that we breathe, and it's just all one big thing. So I, I never try to talk about or single out one piece of it without having people consider how it's all interconnected. Nice, nice. That's yeah. Do you know that you're a poet too? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's it, really. I think the. Um, I think poetry is, is is a good way to describe it. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's uh, um, you know when I came up with the concept for mental meatheads, um, your your influence was very very strong in that because in, in the work that we've done together and the influence that you've shared with me uh, is beyond just the physical aspect and, and the idea that uh, it's, it's really inseparable. You can't take your brain out of your workout just like you can't take your workout out of your brain. And so that's really cool. I appreciate that. Right. And you can't, like, I'll talk about many different things with regard to philosophy. I'll talk about sex. I'll talk about politics, I'll talk about career, I'll talk about religion, because none of these things are separate from our entire, uh, the, the big piece, the big piece of us. So you want to squat more weight, you want to deadlift more, you want to bench press more, you want to have six-pack abs, but you've got these faulty thinking patterns, or maybe rather uh, unresourceful thinking patterns, because nothing's truly faulty. You know, things are the way they are because that's just the way they are. But maybe they're not mm -hmm. resourceful to you. The way you're thinking about God, for example, or the way you're thinking about uh, your career, for example, causes stress in the body, which leads to a sympathetic response, which causes you not to sleep well, which causes you to have diarrhea, which causes you not to digest, assimilate, and utilize your food well, and you want to deadlift more? <laughs> so we got to go back. We, we got to, you know, it's like you, you really, you wanted to live more, and you're all fucked up in your head, and your physiology is damaged because of it. So there's no way that I could ever pay true homage to helping people get fit if I don't address and at least, at least shed light on those ideas. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Um, you have managed, you. You know, it, my knowledge of, of your background, especially in St. Petersburg, started with uh, your gym, Strength Camp. Um, and that has really evolved over, uh, uh, over the time that his, it, it has existed. Um, can you talk about that a little bit, what the evolution of Strength Camp and, and where it came from and where it is now? It's funny because on the outside, it looks like an evolution. It looks like it's started somewhere and it's going somewhere when the fact is that it's always been what it's becoming right now. And again, of course I sound poetic once again, but the thing <laughs> is that the big picture, when you're a big picture person, when you're seeing the big picture, when you're living holistically, not just, you know, in the type of food you're eating, but in every aspect of your life, 
you can see all of the parts before you begin, but for each one of those parts to be manifested physically takes time. And for the big picture to have been built out for me, I started with the piece that was physical training, which was strength training, which was bodybuilding, which was, you know, uh, strongman and, and powerlifting. That was only a piece of the big picture that I saw a long time ago, but it was the one that was most readily available to me to, to earn an income through. It happens to be the one that most people in my sphere of influence are interested in. You know, it was easier for me being a pro strongman and having a strong body and being an ex-football player to to begin and approach the world through the barbell than, say, through philosophy, you know. So um, so when you say that it's evolved, it's kind of like it's just I'm stripping off the layers of what has always been underneath and everyone's getting to see it. I'm getting to see it as it emerges over the years. Yeah, I, I called you a poet earlier, and I'm going to revise that because you really speak. I mean, you are a poet, so I'm not going to take that away. But you speak with an artist's heart. Um, there's a there's a famous quote. I believe it was about Michelangelo. Uh, it's sculpting, and and when they asked him, you know, I mean, how how did you, how did you bring David the, the sculpture David out of out of that stone? And he was like, well, I just took away everything that wasn't David. And the, I think the thing, the thing that identifies an artist, that a true artist, is that they're able to see the finished product before they've even made the first step. And so it, it's a very strong vision that you have. And uh, um, so to all of us, it, it does. It looks like an evolution, but it sounds like to you it was, you know, it's just part of the plan and, and you know, you knew where you were going from the start. Yeah, and I, and I think that we all have the capacity, and, and I think in many ways we all have the desire to do kind of the same thing. We're, we're creative. We're co-creators here you know, as creatures on this planet. We have the capacity to bring what's in our mind into reality. But the problem is that we're stripped of our dreams very early on. We're told why they can't happen, why they shouldn't happen, why they're irrational, why they're irresponsible. And I guess I was just stupid enough, you know, <laughs> in many ways to not listen to them. I, I just was like, well, that, that's fine that it worked out that way for you. And that's beautiful advice. If, if you like that, most of the time these people are miserable, the ones that offer that advice. But anyway, that seems to be what 99% of people are doing. I didn't really care. And, and I, I think just through a rebellious streak in my character, I just said, you know what? fuck you, fuck everyone, I'm going to do it this way. So it looks nice to a lot of people from the outside, but, um, but they've got to realize that, like, you could do that too. In fact, you probably want to do it. So what my job is and what I see myself doing as a professional is inspiring people to do that. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I can, I can completely see that both uh, from what I watch of you on the outside and from my experience in dealing with you in person. Um, you are definitely a, uh, a motivator. And uh, uh, speaking of which, I saw, did you see uh, uh, Seth Godin's uh, Facebook post today or his, do you get his newsletter? I do, but I did not read it today. Zig Ziglar died today. No kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, yeah. He's one of those so he, guys. Yeah, he he published a uh, uh, Seth p published a uh, basically just a kind of a, a farewell obituary to uh, uh, Zig Ziglar, and uh, uh, definitely I, I think that there is a, a very kindred quality uh, between you and, and Zig Ziglar. There's there's a very uh, um, giving and promoting quality about you that. Uh, um, you know, the, the, for anybody who's not familiar, uh, Elliot ha currently has a uh, uh, a project that he's working on called Non Jobs, the Non Jobs campaign, and he's just giving it away. It's uh, it's it's so speak to that while while we're on the subject. Talk about Non Jobs for a little bit because I think that that ties in to uh, a lot of what we're talking about here about the the holistic nature of uh, um, of what you do. Well, if you ask people 
what the most controversial topics that you could approach in life are. They're always the ones that people are most sensitive about, right? So you would say, oh, it's probably like religion, politics, or sex, where in reality, religion and, and politics are of higher thought. If you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, these are things that you think about when things are well. You know, you, mm-hmm. you don't think too much about God when you need to put food in your tape or in your mouth. You know, you might have a faith or something like that, but really you're not going too deep into any type of thought because you're, you're hungry. You're not thinking about sex when you're hungry, right? I mean, it's, again, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, safety and security come before sex. So to, to, to dive into the root, to get to the root of where most people's real dysfunction is, I think, in many ways, now this is not, it's not definitive, is with money. It's survival. It's survival. It's, be, it's being comfortable enough to take care of yourself in other ways. You know, it's, you, how healthy can you be if you're always stressed out about having to meet your mortgage payments or to, uh, or, or to make your car payments? Or to even, you know, I talk to a lot of young guys, I can't get a girlfriend. You know, I can't, I can't get a, no one wants to, no, the girls want to hang out with me because I don't have an iPhone, you know. Economically, we are slaves. This is, we're psychologically and physiologically, physically tied to the economic system in the world that we live in. It's an economic system, a machine that we live in. We can't deny that. We have to recognize it. But we have to also learn the rules of the game, the lies that we've been told, and how to navigate this thing so that we don't lose ourselves. Right, so we don't lose, so we can be in the world, but not of it, right? And that means maximizing your potential, self-actualization, right? Like Maslow says, self-actualization, top of the pyramid, it means maximizing the potential that we've all been given as human beings. We're all born with a particular potential. You know, we're only given a limited opportunity to look at things that we may or may not be able to do. But if you delve in and you experience and you try things out, you'll come to see that there's something special about you too. There's something special about everyone. And it's our job. It's our responsibility. It's not just our right, but it's our responsibility to shine that light on the world. It's, it's ours. We've been given it so that we could shine our light on the world. But too many of us have stifled that light or that light has been stifled in us or we've never even been given an opportunity to explore the fact that there may be a light there. So... The campaign for non-jobs, right? You know, how the hell do I come full circle from that? The campaign, <laughs> campaign for non-jobs is my attempt to show everyone how they can take the passion that lies in their heart, take their light like I described, brush it off, shine it up, and display it for the world to see. And just like everything in nature is symbiotic, it all works together. When you shine your light light shall be shined back on you. When you give, you shall receive. It's, it's like this is biblical shit. You give, give and you shall receive. Another one of the problems that we've, we've been conditioned to accept, one of the, the things we've been conditioned to accept, is that money, we don't deserve money. We don't deserve rewards. We don't deserve to be paid well. You know, there are a lot of guys in the, in the non-job Facebook group that are, are doing fantastic work, work that I personally would pay hundreds of dollars for, but they're, they're afraid to put it out. They're afraid to share it with people. They're afraid to ask for money for it in return. So non-jobs is, is a way to not only encourage you to brush off your light and display it, but also develop the means by which you, could be, you should be rewarded for your, your efforts. So uh, I, I know that's like a long way of describe, just basically saying how to become an entrepreneur through the Internet by sharing people, sharing your passions with people. I mean, that's really it. Nice, nice. Um, I'm reminded and I'm, I'm struggling to remember the author's name, uh, but there's a book on my shelf uh, right now and in my other office, otherwise I would be looking it up. Uh, the, have you read... Uh, uh, why you're uh, dumb, sick, and broke? Read what? I'm sorry. The title of the book is Why You're Dumb, Sick, and Broke. Oh, Wingit, Larry Wingit. 
No, uh, that's not quite it. Um, <laughs> no, no, it sounds and, funny though. I've I've heard of it. Mm. Yeah, no, it's 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 actually it's a great read and uh, uh, one of the the real eye opening things for me uh, in this book is uh, uh, is that he talks about that there is a pervading meme in our culture that wealth is inherently evil. And that, and you see it in in media, you see it in news reports, you see it in our movies. There's all, there's always this undercurrent theme of um, of sin that is associated with wealth, and it's this we have this cultural belief that rich people um, got rich by doing bad things. That you know, in order to uh, in order to have more, you had to step on somebody or take something from somebody else in order to have it. And and if you look at, you know, I mean, if you look at our movies and you look at our comic books and, and these sort of cultural references that we feed ourselves with, uh, Batman is one of the few superheroes that actually comes from wealth. And in order to justify his wealth, his parents had to die. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's oh. just this 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 pervasive sense and so we as we move through the world and we tell ourselves you know I, i'd like to have a little bit more I'd, I'd like to be a little more comfortable i'd like to have you know these things there's this subconscious programming that's running that's saying you know yeah but rich people do bad things in order to get rich and i'm not willing to do bad things i'm not willing to be a bad person and so we sabotage ourselves along the way and continually, um, you know, screw up the efforts that we're consciously making in order to succeed. Uh, so you you talk about that and, and being able to, uh, uh, to be rewarded for the efforts that you put forth, uh, you know, you're, you're a unique individual and in that you're able to break outside of that programming so strongly and to, to promote that message to the rest of the world. So kudos to you for that, my friend. That's, uh, uh, that's profound. Thanks. Uh, I could tell you that it's not been easy and that I'm not free from the conditioning. Um, it, it's still something that I battle with. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think it's just a matter of, and I use this term, for fitness, like bodybuilding, strength training. But it, it really, the barbell is a metaphor for everything in life. I've really come to see that, and that's why I still use strength training as my a metaphor for all these things. But you've got to turn your brain off. You've got to turn your brain off. The same way that you turn your brain off when you've got to push out four more reps. You know, you, I need four more reps here. I can do it. I can do it. But you've got to shut your brain off because your brain is conditioned with all those negative, unresourceful thoughts. And it's the same thing with building your business or putting yourself out there to receive. Those ideas do come. They do come to me. They always come. But I shut them off. I, it's just a matter of turning the brain off. Just say, okay, here's this idea. I feel it coming. I literally see it coming like a, like a, a train coming straight at me. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to turn my eyes I'm not looking at it. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a good technique. Um, I've... I've been introduced to a similar technique like that when I was dealing with uh, uh, some more emotional type stuff early on in my life, and uh, but I never thought about applying it to you know, those other aspects. So that's that's cool. That's that that in itself right there is is a big gift to uh, uh, to offer to the world to to let people know that they need not be subject to their own thoughts. You know, you, you control what you think and you control what what goes in and what comes out. And uh, it takes strength and will to uh, uh, to do that. So that's cool. I like that. I'm going to keep that in mind. So, yeah, about mental meatheads, I am very excited to come and talk, very excited that you put something like this together because – you know, you're offering me all these uh, all this praise, and, and I appreciate it. But you got to realize that it takes one to know one, and there are people in your lives that are that are mirrors to you. And I think many ways that I may just be acting as a mirror to you. And, and, and in, in that, you can see how powerful you actually are, Dave, in bringing together a lot of the the more obscure ideas that I share with people. Uh, by bringing together a team of people that that have these 
holistic ideas. You know, the, the guys that are going to be speaking are not your average meatheads. You know, they're, they're, they're mental meatheads. And you saw yeah. that in each one of us because you saw yourself in each one of us. And, uh, and I want to congratulate you, and, uh, and I'm excited to, to participate. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's it's going to be a huge event. Um, I, I'm overjoyed at the prospect of it, so uh, I appreciate you agreeing to be a part of it. 